what's up my name is Avery and this is the start of a paranormal romance reading vlog baby, baby. so this is actually the start of the love in the night readathon um vlog for me love in the night readathon is hosted by some wonderful ladies here on booktube i'll link them all down below there's some of my very best friends here um, and i love them very much so please go follow all of them this is a week-long readathon taking place from i believe the 24th to the 31st of may where you read um paranormal romance books there's a bingo board and everything i'm loosely following it i'm not all that much following it i'm at a time in my life where i'm not really buying books at the moment and so i have to uh work with what i got when it comes to readathons and so a lot of the prompts are some of the prompts and readathons i don't have books for um so i can't do them so this readathon actually started yesterday and i have finished a book and have made my way through a second one if you would have watched my june tbr video i talk about in that video how i wasn't feeling very well and i was having a flare-up um, with my chronic illness and um later that day i found out that i had a fever <laughs> so we either think i caught something even though i've like barely been anywhere or um my chronic illness was so bad and my flare-up was so bad that it made me have a fever how to have a fever which has never happened before but um it was not covid it was it was bizarre is basically i was having a giant flare-up with my chronic illness like migraine that lasted for days body aches and chills and everything on top of having a fever even though i was not coughing i was not i didn't have a sore throat i was just like a flare-up on steroids basically <laughs> um so later that night i found out i had a fever so i know in that video i like say how i'm not feeling very well and i've had a migraine throughout the whole entire thing and some people might not think <laughs> that's like true i've watched I know some of my friends here who like have chronic illnesses as well and people some very weird people have commented on their videos saying like well you don't look like you're sick or like you don't look like you're in pain I edited all of the uh, footage out where um, I was pausing to breathe and um, taking doing breathing exercises and just like holding my head in pain um, it was a lot I had planned that day to film four more videos because if you watch that video I um, am about to start summer school and I don't know how busy it's going to be so I was going to pre-film basically all my videos for the month of June and I only got to finish one video and it's going up in May. It's not even coming up in June. Once I finished filming, I like went downstairs and I was like, mom, I can't, I, I need to lay down. Like it, it is so horrible. Like it is so bad. I can't even focus. If you would watch the video, I'm also stumbling over my words. I get that way i sometimes stutter and just like i have horrible brain fog and it my i just had a horrible horrible flare-up and it was during my period and whenever i have my period it's the worst because all the blood flow in my body flows down there instead of up here i had a migraine that lasted for about like five days and it was excruciating yesterday i woke up with a fever um, of 100.1 um and but then throughout the rest of the day it like broke and it was fine and i was at 98 point something the rest of the day last night was the first night that i did not wake up in the middle of the night freezing cold and chills um because that's happened for the past like three nights in a row because uh yeah um so since i didn't wake up in the middle of the night i felt like oh i bet it's done we're done and i don't know why my body <laughs> doing that anyway i'm going on a little bit of a tangent here and i'm sorry i'm honestly exhausted and um yeah so while i was in bed all day yesterday i finished a giant book <laughs> i finished a book that has been on many tbrs we have the savior by jr ward book number 17 a part of the black dagger brotherhood i haven't gotten a chance to look at other people's reviews of this book but for some reason I think I remember people like not really liking this one, but I'm gonna have to go back and look at it. But I loved this. I loved this one. Normally in Jared Ward's books, they have like two main couples throughout the later ones, at least. They have like two main couples, like one of the older couples and then a new couple comes in. This is also a vampire romance series, if you didn't know. The old couple that this book was revolved around is my favorite couple in the entire series, which is has John Matthew in it. 
I love John Matthew and his love interest so much so stinking much i love them and i love what's her name sarah and murder's plotline i loved it <laughs> i did i'm such a sap i i loved them i did i loved this book i think i might give it five stars i am upset i love it i loved it i stayed up until like one o'clock last night listening to it almost crying because the end was so good and there were so many little cherry on tops at the end that i loved the end with John Matthew, I am like want to cry right now. <laughs> the end with him and oh my word. I loved that. I am so happy that Jared Ward finally did that. I, oh, I loved this book. I loved it. I don't think a lot of people did. I have a feeling. I just, I think I remember the book came out and a lot of people were reading it and people were saying how much they didn't really like it. I think if I'm remembering this was the right book and I, Oh, sorry. Out of breath for a second. <laughs> Talking too fast. Um, I just remember, I think people not really liking it. I loved this one. It gave me, like, so many feelings I had with the older books. And I love that a lot. Um, I have the next book. I have the next book that I want to read, um, in my June TBR, you would have seen. And it's centered around Boone, and it's the Black Dagger Legacy series, because I'm reading all these books in publication order. I don't know if I'm going to pick up that one. Um, I do have a little bit of a TBR list for myself um, that I wanted to share with you just really fast um, before I end this clip. We do have the group book, which is Deal With the Demon by Chase Verity. This is a demon romance, and I honestly don't know if I'm going to be getting to this one just because even though I do only have to pay 99 cents for it, that's still buying a book. And so, I don't know. I'm kind of like crunched on money at the moment college student here so yeah even 99 cents is something i have to think about like consciously you know um so we'll see if i really want to read it i'll spend that 99 cents oh i forgot to tell y'all about the other book i'm in the middle of um i'm in the middle of fray by joss wheaton and two others um i don't remember the name of it but the book is on my phone so i can't really check because i'm filming on my phone but this is um the graphic novel series that takes place after the Buffy show is done. If you don't know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite TV show of all time. I am obsessed with it. Joss Wheaton is the creator of Buffy, the Buffy universe, and so he decided to make um, some comics. Sorry, I said graphic novels. I meant comics. <laughs> that take place after the Buffy show. It like continues the Buffy show, but in graphic, in comic form, sorry. And so Frey takes place like hundreds of years after Buffy. So far I'm like 30% of the way through it I want to say and it is so entertaining so far. I haven't read a, go a comic or a graphic novel in a very long time and I'm loving this. So this is about um, Me I think it's Mel Frey. Her last name is Frey. The guy with the horns that's on the cover she's kind of he's kind of like her watcher and he comes up to her and is like hey, you're the vampire slayer. And she's like, what are vampires? Like, what's going on? This takes place like in years, years, years in the future. There are flying cars. The speech is different. It's really cool to read about um, like their dialogue in the graphic, in the comic. Dang, I keep doing that. About how their language has like changed and developed. I think this was written in 2003. And so it's like, hilarious to like read about like their changes in language and everything anyway she doesn't even know what a vampire is she's like what's a slayer what's going on and a slayer apparently hasn't been called in like 200 300 years and so apparently i think the rest of the book this <sighs> creature is gonna train her to be oh i'm so sorry <sighs> the um Slayer. I'm really enjoying this. Really fun. Um, it's kind of hard to read on my phone. I really wish I had a physical form that I could just read. I feel like I could fly through it if I had it physically in my hands. Um, but unfortunately, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> so I had to rent it through Libby. I also want to read the, like, I think there's like a short story omnibus book that takes place after that. Here's the cover. I don't remember the title. Um, but I'm reading them in the order that I found on Reddit that they told me to read them on the comics because there's so many comics so i'm just following a uh thing on reddit about how to read them so this is the next one after fray i have a few uh ebooks that i maybe want to get to uh two that i uh, might get to is blind alpha by charlotte michelle i have this one on my kindle library it was a freebie um and i think it's just a wolf shifter book where i believe the alpha is blind and i think it's a romance between him and somebody else i don't know for sure though that's not really interesting to me and um, i've been wanting to read more shifter books then i have a book that jen from the book refuge uh talked about that 
that I really, 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 really want to read. We have um, A Lady of Rook, Rook, Rook's Grave Manor by Catherine Moon. This sounded just so good. Like, I can't really, like, describe it all that much because I personally don't know all that much about it, but I think it's about, like, a woman who, um, like, gets with monsters or something like that. Anyway, the way Jen pitched it was amazing, and I immediately downloaded it to my Kindle. And then the only physical book that I took with me to my parents' house that is paranormal is Thanks for Last Night by Eve Langlius, Millie Tayden, and Kate Baxter. These are three stories in this bind-up um, dealing with uh, shifters of some sort. So that's my, like, tentative TBR. I'm just gonna pick up whatever I want. I'm like, whew, gotta breathe, Avery, gotta breathe. I'm just gonna pick up whatever I want to read and probably hopefully read as much as I can before school starts because this ends on the 31st and that is the day before um, summer school starts. So. Hi everybody, it's actually Friday so it is a couple days later I think three days later. I have not filmed anything yet. This vlog may be uneventful. We will see. Um, I have some things planned for the weekend, like by myself, obviously. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll film those, but as you can see, I'm way cheerier and way more energetic than the last clip. That was the day after I had a fever of 100.1. So I was <laughs> exhausted to say the least and I am still having the after effects of it. I, we honestly don't know what it was. My theory is that I had a flare up that was so bad that um, it caused my body to have a fever because there was literally nothing else wrong with me. And I'm still having the after effects of that. I am having horrible chronic neck pain. Luckily my mom and I, uh, or my mom was able to pop into Target um, while I stayed in the car. And um, she uh, went and got me a uh, kind of like neck support pillow, like one of the, kind of like a tempur pillow to help me with neck pain. And last night was the first night that I slept with it. And oh my word, it has already helped a lot. So I'm very excited. I don't know why I haven't bought one of that sooner. I have chronic neck pain because of my chronic illness. I feel like that pillow is gonna be with me for the rest of my life. And that's going to benefit me very well. <laughs> my migraine has slowly dissipated for the last couple of days. I also just like, honestly haven't been reading all that much because when I am looking at my phone or I'm reading on my phone, I'm straining my eyes kind of, um, because the only books that I have currently that are on my phone I want to read are uh, graphic novels and if you read an ebook or a graphic novel or a comic through the Libby app like they don't zoom in for you like you can zoom in in like comic or graphic novel on your Kindle on the Kindle app you can't do that on Libby and so I'm like straining to read this tiny text and it's really hurting my brain <laughs> so I'm feeling a lot better today I was actually able to do a workout which is amazing for me. I'm just hoping I don't have a flare-up that that is that bad again because that was honestly horrible and it lasted four weeks. Like I was feeling horrible before that point and I'm still having the after effects of it. I still have somewhat of a headache. I'm not to a point where I have to take medicine for it right now. Um, I'm just gonna trudge through it because sometimes you have to do that and I've been taking way too much Tylenol. <laughs> so last time I talked to you, I finished The Savior by J.R. Ward. Um, if you don't know, I have this notebook now that I am in love with. What I do is I kind of like make a spread, kind of. So earlier this month, I had my buddy read with Zay over at Witty Reads on Instagram, um, and we read Can't Help Falling by Cara Bastone. And so this is like a sample page that you can look at that I can show you. Basically, uh, I have one page for each book that I read. And so I'll make like kind of like a spread, the outline with all the markers and everything, like before I pick it up or right as I'm about to pick it up, pick up the book and then I'll fill in as I read. So here are the notes, my thoughts, notes while reading. Cause a lot of the time I'll like write notes on my phone but I don't really like doing that. And so just, I, I now just have this notebook with me everywhere I go. And then I really like to fill in the tropes here that are in the book um, because I like to make specific trope videos. And so it really helps me when I input all the information into Goodreads after I finish it. And then I'm planning on once I go back to my apartment in the fall, I have a colored printer. And so I'm going to be printing out a little picture of the book to go here. So I have that, this one, there's any Duchess will do page. I have to fill out this one, this one. Still have to finish that one. Okay, so here is Phrase. I finished Frey by uh, Joss Wheaton, Carl, Moline and Andy Owens. Uh, this is the graphic novel or comic. I don't know which one it is, y'all. 
I'm sorry. That I was reading earlier, um, and it takes place years later in the future. It's Buffy related. This is a Slayer in a future generation. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. There's not a lot of tropes in here because it's not like necessarily a romance book. It's just, I put it under graphic novel and, um, it's in my Libby library, so I put it in that, in the Goodreads shelves. I love the Buffyverse. I love Buffy books. Um, this wasn't necessarily my favorite because Buffy wasn't in it, you know? <laughs> I just ended up giving it four stars because it's not my favorite thing, but I did have a lot of fun reading it. I'm having a lot less fun right now with the reading experience with the um, other comic that I'm reading, or graphic novel, whatever, <laughs> that I am uh, supposed to be reading next in this uh, reading order for the Buffy comic slash graphic novels because the one I'm currently reading, uh, you can't zoom in on the text. And this one you could, and I really liked that because I read it on Libby, but the one I have, the one I'm currently reading is only available through the Libby app. It's not linked to Kindle. Hopefully that's not what's gonna happen for all of the comics that I check out because I might not read them then because my brain is, was hurting this morning. <laughs> and my only question is like, will the story continue? Because it kind of like, kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger a little bit. There's like this whole side plot um, with somebody that was a big plot twist. I can't tell you about it, but it was like a plot twist. And I was, I literally gasped out loud. I was like, oh, I normally guess plot twist. Draw Sweeten like threw a curveball at me. I did not expect that plot twist. So I'm currently reading Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, Tales omnibus, short little novella stories. There's like so many volumes in this one. Amber Benson, who plays Tara, 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 it's Tara. Um, in the uh, show, she actually is a contributor to one or two of the of volumes in here, which is so cool to me. But again, yeah, I'm having a hard time reading this. I love the stories in it because like so far, it's about each little story about previous slayers and even future slayers. So you get one little volume about Frey in here that kind of like takes place after uh, the like actual full length book or graphic novel, whatever. I really liked that, but it was only like three pages, four or five pages long, um, so it didn't really give you like a whole story, but I thought it was really, really fun. I really love the diver diversity of each uh, volume because the art style will change throughout each volume, the text will change, the story formatting will change. One will have a lot of text, one won't. One is written in rhyme. Like, it's really cool in that sense. I'm just having a hard time reading because the text is really small, so. And I have really bad eyesight, even though I have glasses and everything. I'm almost legally blind, y'all. I can't read that small of a text. <laughs> and then I also read another book, and it is called Last Kiss Goodnight by Gina Showalter. Now, um, last, last night, the day, no, two days ago, whatever. I don't remember the days now. I spent quite a long time trying to find an audiobook on Libby that is a paranormal romance for me to read. I literally typed in the search bar in Libby through the audiobooks, paranormal romance, and I looked at all of the books, all of them, and there's barely anything. <laughs> and like, no, there's a lot of stuff, just barely anything that I was interested in whatsoever. And so I read the description of this one and I was like, ooh, that sounds good because the heroine in this book is deaf. And I was like, Awesome! I love books that have disability wrap in it. I immediately download it and I listen to it. I listen to it in a day. I'm giving it two stars. <laughs> I was so looking forward to this and it just kind of like fell flat for me and I didn't like it. I didn't like it. The tropes in this one are a uh, brooding hero audiobook. It's on my Libby. Um, it's a paranormal romance. It has shifters in it. There's deaf rep and disability rep in here. My only thing is I don't necessarily know if the representation is done right. One of my favorite historical romances of all time is Never Seduce Scott by Maya Banks. And in that book, our heroine is also deaf and she gets around primarily by reading lips. But you read about her struggles even with reading lips. Like she's been reading lips for years and she has still a hard time like she doesn't know what everyone's saying she can't hear them and so she has a lot of difficulty still reading lips even though she gets the gist of it she still has a hard time and in this book our heroine is there's also trigger warning for abuse in here um her father abuses her and um her father owns this circus well first yeah let me tell you about the summary and then i'll go into things i did not really like this takes place at a time where there are other worlders that exist on earth now they're kind of like aliens somewhat but there are so many different species of them and there are shifters there's just so, so many different 
um, paranormal beings on Earth now. And so our heroine's father uh, used to own a circus and our heroine was in charge of feeding the animals as a kid and she befriended the animals, she loved the animals. The book, first chapter I think, starts out with her father telling her that, oh, we're gonna change the circus. We're gonna get rid of all these animals and we're gonna have a circus full of other worlders. We're gonna kidnap them, put them in cages and it'll be basically a sight to see. Everyone can come see it to go look at other worlders in cages. And she is terrified that her dad is going to kill the animals that she loves so much. And so she tries to let them go free, but they all flock to her and want to stay with her because they love her. And her father sees her and is like, uh, no. And so he kills all of the animals in front of her and then forces her to kill the lion who was her best friend. And I'm just like, what is this? And apparently later in years, uh, she tries to free some other worlders that were in the circus because he does go through with making the circus. And he hits her so hard that she goes deaf, that she's deaf now. And so she's learned how to read lips. Our hero here, he like works as like a secret police guy, whatever, that's with the other worlders. I don't know the specifics. The world building in here was very confusing and I don't think done all that well at all because I was super confused. Like, I just didn't know what was going on. The world building was very weird. Was I supposed to read a book before, like a book series before this one? Because this feels a very series spin-off of me. Like, I'm already supposed to know so much information and I don't know basically any of it. And so our hero in here, uh, he ends up getting kidnapped and put in the circus. He meets the heroine, basically goes from there. She tries to like a like free all of them all of the other worlders from the circus but she's having a hard time because her dad's a bad person and abuses her it was just it was not good <laughs> it wasn't good and then okay slight spoilers but i don't whatever uh i'll put my hand like right here okay when i put it down then the spoilers are done there's this whole like part of the book where once they start to like fall for one another they're able to switch eye colors because he has purple eyes and then she has no, he has blue eyes, she has purple eyes, and they're able to like flip back and forth. And that was weird and that was never ever explained. And apparently with that, she could transfer or what, it was no like, she couldn't do it like by hand, it just happened randomly where her deafness was switched to him and she could finally hear and he couldn't hear. And then it was switched back and forth a lot. And that was never explained as to why that could happen. Why could that happen? I don't know. No idea. Also, it was very, very, very convenient, I thought, that when he became deaf, she was like, no, I don't want you to become deaf. I don't want you to have the burden that I have. And he's like, don't worry about it. I know how to read lips too. How? Why? That's super convenient. That's super convenient. Anyway, um, there's this whole part about the heroine being able to read lips. And you see her? not struggle at all with reading lips at all. Nana zilt. She understands everything every person says by reading their lips. Like she shows no struggle. She gets every word basically that they're saying correct in her brain. Like she understands everything that they're saying. And I don't even, they didn't even tell us, the author didn't tell us how long she's been deaf for. But like even our heroine that I, the heroine that I love and never seduce, seduces Scott, she was deaf for years. She still had a hard time. So like, it just, it didn't even show the difficulty of having to read somebody's lips, like at all. There's also times where she would talk to somebody who was at a far distance from her and she could still understand what they were saying. Maybe she has perfect vision, who knows? Also, I'm not deaf. I cannot speak on the representation. So um, if you're deaf, maybe, maybe, maybe let me know. Maybe let me know what you thought about that because I don't know. That seemed kind of too convenient for me, in all honesty. Okay, so I have no other uh, book updates for you. The sun is slowly going down, so the light is uh, going away. Um, I'm going to be editing a few uh, clips for videos right about now. I don't know, y'all. I really want to listen to audiobooks right now because my brain hurts, my head hurts. I'm not having a grand old time reading physically at the moment or ebooks at the moment. I do really want to read Blind Alpha. I really want to read that. I might, I might start that later. Who knows? Because I really do want to read it. I kind of really want to read the next book that I have to read in uh, the Black Dagger Brotherhood slash Black Dagger Legacy series, which is Blood Truth, but that's on my June TBR. 
but I think I might just read it anyway because uh, sometimes I just want to listen to an audio like I that's the only paranormal romance that I know that I'm gonna love or enjoy at least and Libby has like nothing that interests me right now i'm working on stuff while also watching booktube which also needs to happen because i have like 23 videos in my watch later so i need to get on that as well okay i'm rambling i'm gonna go hello everybody it's the next day i have finished a book and i have started another one i have finished the buffy verse or buffy the vampire slayer omnibus tales collection i found a better way to read it i was able to read it on my laptop because i remember you could go to your Libby account through the internet. So that's what I did. And so I was able to read it through like basically like Libby.com, which was way better. I got to zoom in on the screen. I just read on my laptop till like 1 a.m. It was super duper fun. I enjoyed this, I think more than Frey. So I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of five stars. I just didn't adore it. There were some stories that weren't necessarily my favorite that I was kind of bored by, but overall I really liked this. And if you love Buffy, I think you'd love this. Um, you might not like Frey, but this one was super duper fun and you get to see like so many different, um, different slayers and previous characters. Oh my gosh, there's one that was so, the ending was so cute of it. There's one that has Spike in it, one that has Angel in it, Buffy's in one, Dracula's in one, Xander's in one at one point. They were super fun. I really liked them. So I have started Blind Alpha by Charlotte... I forget the last name, but I've started it. I was really intrigued by it. We'll see how, I'm gonna read some more and we'll see how I feel about it. But I always like to start ebooks from the cover page. I like to look at the cover page and then flip through the beginning pages. Cause sometimes when you open an ebook, it jumps straight to chapter one, page one. And I don't like doing that. I'm swiping through like the rest, the acknowledgements, the chapter, like table contents. It says that this book was originally on Wattpad. And so, We'll see. I find Wattpad stories sometimes entertaining. I've only read the prologue in chapter one at this point, and it is very much reading like a Wattpad story, uh, especially the writing. The writing is very Wattpad-esque. So basically the prologue of this book is about our, uh, the hero of the story and he's a wolf shifter. Well, both of them are wolf shifters, the hero and the heroine. And he was a part of this pack or he is a part of this pack and years ago his father was the alpha and his father lost his mate his mate ended up dying and he kind of became crazy he decided to like put his pack in danger and go attack the pack who killed his wife but he didn't like take any precautions he didn't like look out for everyone else's safety he just wanted to get revenge and it, that ended up killing so many people in their pack it killed the alpha and so his son takes over but in that battle he ended up becoming blind. Chapter one is of our heroine leaving a different pack. She's in a different pack and on her 18th birthday you can find who your mate is. Like the your mate instinct thing will like trigger or whatever. And so she um, escapes her pack. I think the alpha of the pack like uses and abuses her and so she's finally like I am leaving. I'm gonna go find my mate and he could protect me. She escapes on her 18th birthday and she comes across the territory of the same pack that was in the prologue. Um, and they end up like, um, cause you're not allowed to really like go onto other packs territories. And so they kind of like catch her and like bring her to the alpha immediately right as she sees him. She knows that oh, that's my mate. Oh my gosh, I found him. He's kind of like, get her out of my sight. I don't know this woman. And she's like, are you rejecting me? And he's like, what do you mean? Like, you're not my mate. I wouldn't know if you're my mate. But you can't like fully know if someone's your mate unless you physically see them and you can like look into their eyes. And um, he can't do that. And so at the end of the chapter, she's like, I will try everything in my power to make sure that he knows that I am his mate or something like that. <laughs> it's very cheesy. <laughs> we'll see. Normally these stories like make or break for me. I don't know if it just becomes too cheesy and too cringy. The writing becomes too cringy for me. I'm probably gonna put it down, um, but we will see. <laughs> I then have an audiobook that um, I'm in the middle of downloading. My internet is really, really slow. So it's been downloading for like an hour. We have uh, a book by Laura Kay. The name is escaping me right now. I'll put the picture on the screen. This was like one of like five books that I could find on my Libby that were somewhat interesting to me. I love Laura Kay. She wrote one of my favorite romances, an amazing romance called uh, I think it's called Love and Darkness. That's the romance that I love and Brie from Alone Words adores about a couple who gets stuck in an elevator in the dark and they don't know what the other person looks like and they fall in love in an elevator basically that book is so good and so um i've read one other book by laura k no i've read two other books by laura k and i really enjoyed them and so hopefully i like this one but 
The summary, not gonna lie, is really bizarre. <laughs> this is about a woman who like lives in a cabin around, this is around Christmas time kind of, um, and she is really sad. She's a widow, she lost her husband. And so it's basically make herself feel better and basically me cheerier she kind of like makes a snowman in like honor of him or to kind of like look like him or something like that and then the snowman comes to life as like a man and then they fall in love <laughs> that sounded really bizarre so we'll see how i feel about this one i just want an audiobook to listen to and i kind of want to leave blood truth to um june um, to look forward to in June to read. Oh, I'm also today going to be starting my movie marathon of Twilight. This is perfect because it's the Love of the Night readathon, it's the Paranormal Romance readathon, and I'm gonna be having a Twilight movie marathon. Every single Memorial Day weekend, I have a Twilight movie marathon. I'm normally home alone. My parents go out of town on Memorial Day weekend and I am the dog sitter, cat sitter, basically. As you can see, two of them are behind me. One is obnoxiously chewing a bone right now. I am incredibly sorry. <laughs> when I was in high school, my family was a victim of a neighborhood shooting at my old house. Memorial Day weekend is kind of like very touchy for me. Um, normally my best friend comes and hangs out with me, but she is doing amazing things. She just got her first like full big girl job, which I'm super excited for and so she's moving in a couple days which is so exciting for her and so I normally spend the weekend with her and we have a Twilight movie marathon um, but I'm going to be alone this weekend with my pets which is gonna be fine I'm gonna be good because I don't react well to fireworks I honestly hate fireworks with every fiber of my being I like to distract myself every single Memorial Day weekend with a Twilight movie marathon so that's what we're going to be doing so I am going to go see if my audiobook downloaded and if it didn't, then I'm gonna try and um, put on Twilight. I have some chores to do around the house and I'm working on my diamond painting. Let me get it out. So I'm probably gonna be working on this while I'm watching Twilight. I like to keep my hands busy when I'm watching stuff. I can't just sit there and watch something. So I have made this much way through, if you can see the plastics there, but I've done this much of my diamond painting. There are sunflowers super pretty right so if you didn't know about diamond painting they're like if you zoom in whoop, focus anyway they're like little numbers and symbols and if you look whoop, on this side right here they're like um there's a key here and so you have so many different bags of like little tiny little tiny diamond things and you like stick them to this when you peel this back it's like sticky and so you just stick them here and when you're done you'll have like a little diamond things on here. I love this. This helps a lot when I'm feeling anxious. Um, I love doing this and so I feel like this is perfect for this weekend. I have a goal to finish this by the end of summer. It is huge. This is the biggest diamond painting that I've done. So I'm going to be working on this while uh, watching movies and maybe listening to an audiobook in between. Okay, Willow's watching the movie. There are werewolves on the screen, so I think that's why. Someone's hurt? But I think she likes Twilight, she's right? <laughs> she's watching the movie. <laughs> oh look, she lifted her head. What did you see, wolf? Was that a wolf, Willow? She's yeah? With me. You see wolf? Oh my gosh. 
Do you think Edward's cute too? Are you watching him? Yeah? <laughs> okay, everybody, this is the end of the vlog. Sorry if you can hear a chainsaw. My dad is currently cutting down some trees or doing something with a chainsaw outside. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too loud. I'm trying to talk kind of loud. Okay, so I'm here to talk about the books that I ended up reading in the Love in the Night readathon. This is the end of this vlog. I ended up completing five books and 30% uh, of another one. So I ended up reading The Savior by J.R. Ward. I ended up giving this book five out of five stars. I then read Frey by Joss Wheaton and a couple illustrators, uh, and I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. I then read Buffy the Vampire Slayer Omnibus Tales, also by Joss Wheaton and a bunch of other illustrators and authors, and I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I then read Last Kiss Goodnight by Gina Sherwalter, Show, Show Walter, which I ended up giving a two out of five stars. I also then completed, since the last time I spoke to you, North of Need by Laura Kay. I ended up giving this one a three out of five stars. I somewhat enjoyed this one. I was honestly a little bit put, I guess like put off by the fact that he was a snowman. You know, <laughs> like she made him as a snowman and like he had different colored eyes because she gave the snowman two different color button eyes. I just couldn't get over the fact that he was a snowman, you know? Like, I just, I couldn't, I guess. <laughs> Even though he's actually like a snow god, he's actually a snow god, which was very interesting, actually. Um, I was a little confused by the world building and the gods a little bit, but in this book, I loved the talk about grief. Grief was a very predominant subject in here because our heroine lost her husband, I believe two years ago. Um, in an accident. She talks about that a lot and she has to get through that and is still grieving at the beginning of this book. Um, and so you get to see that and I thought the discussion about grief was great. I love Laura Kay and I love her writing. This book, however, just I guess wasn't my thing. <laughs> I'm also 30% of the way through Blind Alpha by Charlotte Michelle. This one is definitely a Wattpad story. Like you can totally tell chapter by chapter how each chapter would end and it's basically like a Wattpad story. I think I'm still gonna finish it. I'm kind of entertained. I don't think that it'll get above a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. We'll see though. Something may wow me. I have no idea. But the writing is very juvenile and um, just very predictable. And I can kind of see where the story is going in some aspects, but maybe the author will throw a curveball at me. Who knows? But this is reading very much like a Wattpad story. I also watched all of the Twilight movies. I had a Twilight movie marathon with myself and my puppies. <laughs> and um, I got a lot of my diamond painting done. I'd show you, but the diamond painting is not near me at the moment. And I don't feel like going downstairs to get it. <laughs> but I felt like I had a great reading week. I read some pretty great books and unfortunately some duds, um, but that's okay. I feel like we all have different kinds of reading. And so this time I just had some good and some bad reading, which is okay with me. So thank you so much to all the wonderful hosts of this readathon. I love how they put this on. Um, and I'm definitely going to be participating the next time that they put this readathon on. I had so much fun and I love good paranormal romance books. Thank y'all so, so much for watching this vlog. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And let me know if you also participated in the Love in the Night readathon. You have a vlog or something that I can watch. I would love to watch it. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank mm -hmm. you.